Finding our identity in God's grace alone, we will see God's kingdom expand across the globe as we love people well and serve our spheres of influence. We will lead God's people to a flourishing life as we help them build healthy relationships and grow in awareness of how they can walk out all the unique gifts and talents they have in Christ. We will impact every city we are in by meeting everyone where they are with God's tangible love. With innovation and creativity, always pointing to Christ as the author of our faith story. We as the collective have the opportunity to come together in unity and love well. Because our God and Creator loves us well. We can be generous because He is generous with us. And we can dream big because our God is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. We as the church have been created and called for a purpose, and today we can embrace our place and fulfill that purpose. We are the collective, and we are united under one name and for one cause, Jesus. 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 Happy Sunday, TC fam, and welcome back to the Collective Online Campus. My name is Josh, and I want to warmly welcome you, especially if this is your first time joining us. There's going to be a QR code popping up on your screen, and I want to invite you to take out your cell phones to scan that QR code where it will take you to our Connect page. There, you'll get to ask anything you want about our community, and we want to get to know a bit more about you as well so that we can put a face behind those screens. I want to invite you guys to check out our website, thecollective.global, where it has all sorts of information about things happening in our community. Make sure you click that link on the top that says connect groups and find a connect group, a small group that you can join happening all throughout the week because here we don't believe that church is just something you watch, but it's something that you are a part of. If you're a teenager, make sure you guys visit the TC Youth Instagram and join them for their offline gatherings happening every Saturday at 4 p.m. here at the Pondok Inda campus. If you're a parent of a little one, make sure you check out TC Young's YouTube channel where they post content made especially for your kids. And get them registered to join also the TC Young space happening on Sundays here at our Pondok Inda campus. Make sure you guys follow our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube so that you can stay up to date with everything happening in our community. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's service.
Hey church, as we are almost closing the first month of the year, I just want to take this time to thank God for what He is doing for our community, for our church. As a church, we've been able to help those who are in need. We've been encouraging one another. We've been blessing one another. We've been dreaming together for a God-class vision to reach the unreached and the lost. All of this progress still this day is only because of your generosity. In the book of John, it says that God gave His only Son because He loves us. The same generosity God has planted in our hearts. And your testimony, my testimony, and our testimony is what brings us together. A testimony of how great and good and generous our God is. So if you're watching this and you are inspired by what God is doing in your life, in our community, in our church, in our town, in our city, in our country, and you want to be a part of it one of the ways that you can do so is by clicking the link down below it will lead you to a page where it'll give you all the necessary details that you need with that being said i believe that god will encounter you wherever you are because he loves you have a blessed sunday enjoy the service what is up tc family and welcome back to another online experience here in the collective church and I'm so excited that you're jumping and tuning in with us today. You could be doing anything else on a Sunday morning, like watching a YouTube video while this is playing. And that's okay. Look, I'm happy that you are tuning into the sermon with us wherever you're watching from. And in fact, look, if you're new and you're especially someone new to the community or new to faith, we welcome you. We're so happy that you're, uh, you're tuning in with us. And I'm excited uh, because today... We're going to be finishing up our sermon series talking about seasons, talking about seasons. Now, look, if you want to go through week one and week two, you can check our video archive uh, in our channel. You can watch the part one and part two so we can catch you up. Because in this series, we've been going through the life of a guy named Joseph. Now, in part one, we talked about how in every season, we don't have to settle. We don't have to become stagnant or comfortable, but God wants us to be intentional with everything that we do, with everything that we face. And last week, we talked about how God is faithful to us in every season that we go through, that God's timing is perfect and always spot on. And so today, as we wrap up this series, we're gonna be talking about how Jesus is our Joseph, how in every season, 
It's not necessarily always about you trying to be Joseph or how hard you can try to work through life or make it through things, but we have to understand that theologically Jesus is our Joseph, that he's the one that goes before us in everything that we go through. You know, as I, as I say that point, I'm actually reminded of a story of a friend of mine. I had a friend of mine that he's a, uh, he's a videographer and, and uh, he's really good at videos. And, and at one time he was telling me this story and, and he, you know, he, he said it like this. He said, you know, Jordan, I had a friend of mine, another friend of a friend, <laughs> my friend that's a videographer, he's videoing his friend. And, and this one guy, he's asking my friend if, if he can help set up a proposal for him. Now, see, this proposal, it was, it was kind of based off of, a, uh, off of like a cliff idea, like my friend wants to get married like near a cliff and, or get engaged near a cliff and, uh, and get like the perfect video of everything. And, and, uh, and so uh, this one guy, he's telling my friend, he's like, hey, you know, this is what I'm envisioning. This is what I want to do. And my friend's like, okay, well, because you're my friend, I want to make this happen. Let's do it. And so long story short, you know, he starts making this elaborate plan where, okay, we're going to make a story timeline for the engagement. You guys are going to go through all of the spots that you've been through your dates, and then it's going to end at the cliff where you want to pop the question. And so they're like, okay, let's do that. We're going to go through this restaurant and then this park, and we're going to meet here. And she's going to have no clue what's going to happen. It's going to be a complete surprise. And, and at this point, they also start including the family. So they start telling the girl's mom and dad, like, hey, you know, like we want to get the proposal here. She has no clue. Keep it a secret. Uh, can you help us uh, meet us at the cliffside? And we're going to set up these candles and these flowers and all these things. And throughout this whole trip, they want to get this documented. Like somehow they want to get this whole thing videoed and documented. So my friend that's a videographer, he's really trying to set up each scene and, and secretly be behind the scenes videoing everything so that the, the couple or at least the girl of the relationship has no clue what's going on. So they get the whole plan set up. It's, it's D-Day. It's, it's engagement day. And so, so then they start going through all the all the, the plans. So they start going to the restaurant. They're in the restaurant. Uh, and the guy's like, hey, you know, let's go to our restaurant. It's our first time we met. And he's talking to the girl. And, and little does she know, my friend that's a videographer, he's in the background, kind of like, like behind, the, behind the cooking counter, kind of videoing them. And she has no clue of what's going on. She just is talking to her beloved to-be husband. And so they go from there, from the restaurant, then they go to like a movie theater. That's where they watch their first movie. The guy didn't really sneak into the movie, but he at least got shots of them. And, and it goes from one place to another, to the park, to a gas station, to the beach. But finally, it leads up to this point where they are heading up to this cliff. Now, my friend's kind of freaking out because he's like, how am I going to get the shot where they're on the cliff, but they don't know that I'm there. She doesn't know I'm there because the cliff's pretty wide open. And they're setting up all of the things like the, the flowers and the candles and leading up to the actual spot on the cliff. But my friend had this elaborate idea. He thought, you know what I'm going to do? I want to see if I can scale the side of the cliff so that I can get the perfect shot where they would have no clue that I'm right there. So my friend, he, he goes ahead of, of his friend that's going to get engaged and goes ahead of them, gets to the spot where they're going to be getting engaged on the cliff side. And he kind of looks down below the cliff and he sees that there's some like rock formations that he can climb down to and kind of scale down to so he can record the engagement as they're coming up. And so as he, as he goes ahead and he's thinking in his head, like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing this, but anything for the right shot, right? Like if you're a really good photo a videographer, you know, when you, we have a really good idea or you have a really good shot, you don't want to do anything for that shot. And so my friend, you know, he kind of scales down just enough of the cliff and the rocks where his, his uh, you know, his feet are kind of touching the, the next level, but he can hang his camera over the top of the cliff so he can still record the couple to be engaged. And so long story short, the, the guy and the girl, they finally ride up in their, in their car and the girl starts seeing the flowers and she sees her family and, and uh, she sees like her, uh, her friends and, and they see like the, the flowers and the candles, all this stuff. It's like the, the beautiful setup. And then as they go up to the, the centerpiece and the big circle, you know, the guy pops the question and, and the friend that's been videoing, he has like the best view the best shot, the best angle, he gets the sunset, all of those things. And it's the most beautiful moment that like the plan just went according to plan. Now, my friend that recorded everything, he always stayed a step ahead of his friends as they planned this so that they can get the perfect shot. And see, in this moment, 
the girl had no clue this was happening. She was so tunnel vision and set in the scene. She was so tunnel vision and set on what was happening in front of her that she had no clue that my friend was videoing her around her in the side in the background. And see, I think it's the same way in seasons of life that we go through that we can get so tunnel vision on what's happening. So tunnel vision on the season that we're in. So tunnel vision into everything that's going on around us, whether it's the circumstances or relationships or things that are going on from problems and breakthroughs. And and what's happening in the seasons of life, we can have no clue of really what's going on behind the scenes or ahead of us or around us because we're really just stuck, focused, what's in front of us. And see, in the same way, when we look through the life of Joseph, when we look through our life as people, Jesus is kind of like my friend as he's a videographer in our life that he's always ahead of us. He's always a step ahead of us. He's always making a way for us. You know, I want to pick up here in Genesis chapter 50, and this is the last chapter in the book of Genesis. What's going to happen in this moment is, see, Joseph, he finally rose up to power and he was second in command in all of this country called Egypt. And what's going to happen is actually it's, it's, it's kind of like a movie where the very family that betrayed Joseph and sold him to slavery, almost killed him, in fact, the same family, well, they're in dire need because as the whole country is going through a famine and a drought and no one has food, well, this same family has to come to Egypt to get food. Now, as they're coming to Egypt to get food, the, the very person that they have to get food from is the very person that they betrayed, that they backstabbed, Joseph. And so prior to this moment in Genesis 50, what happens is, is Joseph, he, he, uh, he meets his brothers again and he goes through this whole moment where he's like, man, how am I supposed to respond? Am I supposed to forgive them, reconcile them? I'm full of anger, but I, I'm in this position where I've gone through so much. God has got me through so much. And, and how am I supposed to go through this moment? And so he reconciles his relationship with both his brother and with his dad, his brothers, sorry, his brothers and with his dad. Now, as this relationship gets reconciled, you know, Joseph, he, he was always known as the favorite in the eyes of his father. In fact, his father thought that he was just killed. He had no clue he was sold by his brothers. He thought that he was just killed and somehow died from like an animal and all that. And so Joseph's dad always thought, man, like I just lost my baby boy. But then Joseph, uh, Joseph or Jacob, Joseph's dad, that's his name, Jacob, You know, he was the main kind of component to reconcile this relationship, to to be the sole thing to kind of bring the whole family together. Now, what happens is, is Jacob passes away. So the brothers are thinking, man, like if Jacob's gone, well, he was the very one that never betrayed Joseph, that always wanted the best for him. So if he's gone, do you think Joseph is going to go against us? He's going to backstab us. He's going to hurt us in the midst of this horrible season. And so we're going to pick up here in Genesis chapter 50. And this is in verse 14. It says, after burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had accompanied him to his father's burial. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves. And it it says this in verse 19. We're going to keep going here. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. See, look, Joseph, again, if we recap his story, he was with his family, gets betrayed by his brothers, gets sold to slavery. Out of slavery, comes out to this guy named Potiphar. And he, Potiphar, entrusts him to pretty much be the head of his entire household. Now, later, Joseph gets kind of blackmailed for something he never did and gets thrown into prison. And so he's in prison. And after Joseph gets in prison, he comes out on top and he becomes Potiphar's second in command. Now, if we want to talk about seasons of life, Joseph went through seasons of life, seasons of ups and seasons of down. 
But now we're here in this moment where Joseph the very, was confronted with the very people that betrayed him. And he has to kind of reconcile this reality that how am I supposed to treat these people? But I love Joseph's response. He said, look, am I God that I'm supposed to punish you? Am I God that I'm supposed to put horrible things on your life, pay you back the justice that I want, that I felt from all the pain and hurt that you put me through? Am I God that I'm supposed to put that back on you? And not only that, he says that and he, he says in verse, uh, he says that in the verse that he says that, you know, what you intended for harm, God meant it for good. See, so for so many of us, I think we like to paint the hero story in our minds that we think if I could just be like Joseph and make it through this season and get to the other side, then all the times that I've been wrong and all the times that I've fought through things that I will finally find the affirmation and the justification and the sense of joy, uh, joy and contentment that I think I'll find once I make it through the season, like we'll, we'll think, man, as, as the heroes of our own story, we think we'll find that. We think we'll get there. We'll think we'll experience that. But you know, church, I want us to remember one thing that you know, to be the hero of your own story, as true as that is, that you are the one that's living your life, to be the hero of your life is sometimes a burden that's too big to bear. In fact, when Jesus died at the cross thousands of years ago, he did that so you would know that he's going to be the hero of your life. In fact, Joseph, his response is that, man, am I God that I would punish you? You know what that says? It's almost as if he's saying, you know what? You might have done all these things to me, but look at how God has been faithful through all the seasons of my life. Look how God has showed up through all the seasons of my life. So church, for you, you have to understand that Jesus is our Joseph in our life. Jesus is the Joseph in your life. That when the brothers are coming and they're in a famine, they have no food to provide and they're freaking out on what they're supposed to do in the season, well, in the same way that Joseph was sent ahead of them, Jesus is always ahead of us. Jesus is always a step ahead of us. He's always with us. He's guiding us, but he's always has the best for us. He's always preparing a way for us to get through this season because he's already awaiting us in the next season. And see, Jesus is the Joseph in your life. He wants to provide. He wants to be the one in, in the midst of drought and famine in your life and there should be no fruit no miracles, no circumstances working in your benefit. Jesus wants to work for you at his perfect time. Church, I want to end with this verse. And it says this in Romans chapter 8. It says this in verse 29. It says, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called, a, are called according to his purpose. You know, I think about how if Joseph got out of prison earlier according to his time, he might not have ever met Pharaoh. If Joseph got, got out of Potiphar's, uh, Potiphar's household, or maybe he didn't work hard enough in Potiphar's household, he might not have had the wisdom and the leadership to learn how to lead a nation if he couldn't lead a household. See, in the same way, we are always freaking out in our seasons because we're like, man, you know, God, where are you? God, have you forgotten me? God, where are you? God, what are you going to do? How am I going to get through the season? But God, because he's so faithful in his timing, He's going to get you through it. And in the same way, God uses every season that we go through. Jesus is in every season that we go through, and he goes ahead of you in every season that you go through. And because of that, man, we can just trust his timing. We can trust his voice, and we can trust his hand in our life that God is always going to pull through according to his power and his timing, what he has for you. So at church, I want to close in prayer. And as we close this series, I want to remind us that God is faithful, that you can keep holding on to the season, and keep working through the season and keep trusting that Jesus is the hero of the story, that he wants to be the Joseph in your life that's going to go ahead of you and provide for you in this season that you're in. So let's take a moment and let's pray together. God, I pray that, you know, when we go through moments as humans where we freak out, we question, we question the church, we question people we question people in authority we question our own season and say man god you know why why do i why do i have to go through this i don't i don't agree with what's happening i, I don't agree with this person well god in the midst of all of this would you remind us that jesus you go ahead of us you want to provide for us you have the best for us in your mind and so god i just pray that 
you would just continue to uh, continue to just help us work this season and, and journey with you and trust you in the process. So we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So look, I love you, TC family. Stay tuned as we get ready for Vision Sunday coming up very, very soon. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Happy Sunday, guys. nothing new how could I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. I will worship you oh, So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I've nothing else fit for a Except for a heart singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, oh, we thank you, God. Yeah. Come on, church, from wherever you are, I just want you to declare this with me. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and raise the Lord Oh, come on, my soul Come on, my soul hey. Oh, don't you let it lie Lift up your soul You've got a light Inside of those lungs Get up and raise the Lord 
Let's sing this one more time together. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have. Except for my heart singing Alleluia What a great service today. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Remember to visit the website, thecollective.global, and get plugged in to one of our many small group communities so that we can continue the discussion from what was discussed today. Love you guys so much. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.